Welcome to episode 810 of the Wrestlers for Podcast. This is a recap of AEW's Full Gear, which happened in Inglewood, California, at the Kia Forum. And tonight, MGF is able to go ahead and complete full circle a 365 day reign as world champion. And for what they did for this, going on Audible to go with Jay White and the storyline, they put a lot into it. 30 minute match. Having Adam Cole back into the mix and making that a centerpiece of the uh, throughout the night was quite a story to tell. You know, am I really feeling the whole buddy thing with Adam Cole and MJF still? Yeah, I guess. A bit different in the dynamic here because if we're still talking about MJF and Adam Cole, notice we didn't get we didn't get the kingdom and we didn't get Roderick Strong, right? I don't think they were even involved in any of that. I don't know. Maybe I missed it, but. Part of it is you just seeing all this year, and I'm like, some of the matches, you had a lot of tag team matches where maybe certain things might not have mattered too much. And, of course, there's storylines that are embedded with some of them when it comes to the Golden Jets and the Don Callis family, or it's the Young Bucks and the Golden Jets, or if it's Sting, Darby Allen, and Adam Cole against the Patriarchy now called, Christian Cage, Lucius Horse, and Nick Wayne. You know, there's... A lot of stories that are going on. They're just kind of just running through the mill. They gave us the, inter- the international man- championship match with John Moxley and Orange Cassidy, which it was the match they needed to give to rectify the fact that if Orange Cassidy was out and John Moxley was hurt, they wanted to go ahead and make good on the fact that John Moxley at least got a chance to go ahead and have a rematch for said belt after he got hurt. So to give that was good. Felt very weird the fact that I couldn't watch this in the theater tonight. For whatever reason, it was not there. So I didn't get to watch it in the theater. And I would call, and I actually, no, I reached up to the managers. They didn't have it. So for whatever reason, it was not there. Joe Han Productions, I don't know what you guys did, but we didn't have it in the Regal Theater tonight. So, in Royal Palm Beach, just saying. So, storylines across the board, you could take some of the were kind of retcon and brought into the space when it comes to Adam Cole and Jay White. We know it goes back to the fact that. Adam Cole was supposed to take on Jay White at Forbidden Door, but he got hurt. And when Jay White talked about getting the belt off of MJF, you had the whole sitting of the AEW World Championship belt, which now MJF finally has back in his partner. And Adam Cole helped to do enough to interfere. First of all, earlier in the night where MJF and Samoa Joe were able to go ahead and successfully retain the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles. And then come back later on as Adam Cole would take Adam J.F.'s spot at the beginning of the match with Jay White to work off of that. So I think that wrinkle of Adam Cole being put into the main event, though the storyline works for it, I felt a little bit miffed by the fact that we're going to not give us that storyline that we're going to do something else because we didn't know how it was going to play out. I mean, I felt WCW Nitro when all of a sudden the main event got switched. And that would tell me, man, something goes on here. And I'm like, this is not good. But we've still got MGF coming back out because we've already seen him come out many times, valiantly coming back from injury and getting into the match. So they pulled that here, full-fledged baby face for MJF across the board. Adam Cole is still alongside tight-knit clothes, best friends with MJF. They got that going on. And... Jay White, even though he's got Bullet Club gold on the side, were not enough to go ahead and fend off and be able to go ahead and help Jay White win the title. The guns got knocked out from ringside. Juice Robinson was not a factor. So much more to that. We know at Wrestle Dream, we had Christian Cage and Darby Allen taking on each other for the TNT title. And Nick Wayne turns on Darby Allen. So the story goes off of that. And Adam Colvin being brought into the space debuting a saving sting and Allen that same night. So a couple of months later, we get to the six man tag and bring that story to light. Okay. We're getting all these stories that have been fleshed out. They've been run through. It is time to have them to have the pay-per-view and get to that point. So I think that's fine. I mean, we did get wrestle dream about six weeks ago. Well, a little more uh, seven weeks ago. So it's still enough time away 
for us to kind of get built back up to see these matches come to light, which was fine. And like I said, with All Out, John Moxley did beat Orange Cassidy to win the international title. And then Moxley dropped the title to Ray Phoenix because of the legitimate concussion that he had during the match. Things can happen. And then we just move forward where Moxley gets a chance to go after Cassidy after all. So in the matches tonight, I missed a couple of them in the pre-show, but Eddie Kingston over Jay Lethal for the Ring of Honor World title. And Ring of Honor Television, actually, interestingly enough, they had Ronda Rousey come out and appear on Ring of Honor TV. We'll see how that all works out. But she's now apparently in, in, a, in Ring of Honor. So Eddie Kingston, a good action. And by the way, a whole lot of plunder going on, but Eddie Kingston still holds on. But he does have Ortiz come out to go ahead and help with an assist during the match to kind of take care of that. Cody Casanova over Buddy Matthews, 10-minute match. And then MGF and Samoa Joe, we talked about where the guns tried to go after them and not successful. So again, the Bullet Club Gold coming out, their hands empty going out throughout the night. We're not able to get the best of MJF or Samoa Joe or Adam Cole. So they went with Sting Darby on Adam Copeland, accompanied with Ric Flair over the patriarchy. Because remember, Christian Cage, as long as he doesn't have the belt on the line, that's the part he can't lose. But to have Sting win the match here and go along, they just, you know, Sting and Ric Flair now together as a team. And Darby and Adam and all in the mix, 15-minute match. By the way, they kept matches pretty short early on. They were moving them along a little quick. And Orange Cassidy over John Moxie in 12 minutes. That was quick. See, and some of these matches didn't need to get and go stretched out for the long period of time. They did do matches where they did go longer, but they kind of left us later on the night. So you really ran through the first couple of matches pretty quickly. Like first hour, you got into the four matches. You were already into the ladder match for the AW te- World Tag Team titles. Tony Storm and Hikaru Shida and Tony Storm playing full character. They've fleshed out and they've really have developed the timeless Tony Storm character. So for anybody going to get to this spot, it was interesting what they did with the development of the women in this division. And for those that kept feeling like, well, the women in this division, there's not much to be said about how important they are or how interesting they are. But I think tonight... AEW did a good job of showcasing women. They had some women to go ahead and show off and really show, look at how far they've come coming into the space. Tony Storm with a completely different gimmick. And she's back holding the belt now for the third time over her car sheeting. And we'll see how that goes on with that. But yeah, Tony Storm at Luther. It's a great team. Good to see her with gold. I think they just need to do something where whatever they're going to use in her shorts, in her trunks, to use to hit a shot at Sheena in the match. Like the foreign object was pretty clearly showing underneath the shorts. So like they, they maybe there was something else they could have done, but like they kept using that gimmick of her using foreign objects inside her shorts to use in the match. And that's what they did. So that particular piece they had of the accoutrement that came with Tony storm. That was the part where it didn't hold up as well, but I mean, she did recover pretty well and did what she had to do to go ahead and finish the match. And, you know, they made it where the referee, Audrey Edwards, completely, Aubrey Edwards, completely was blind to what was going on. The latter match of the World Tag Team titles, they decided to stay with Ricky Starks and Big Bill. For Ricky Starks, more importantly, but I guess him and Big Bill together, you want to do something where Ricky Starks, they want to give him the belt. They're not going to the international title with him yet, which they could at some point. But for Ricky Starks so far, they dealt with a deal with Brian Danielson and Ricky the Dragon Streamboat. And we're moving here into the whole part of being the tag team here with Big Bill. And Big Bill looking pretty good in this match, by the way, as well. But like, again, a lot of things going on in this match, a lot of plunder. And maybe I was starting to get a little bit desensitized by the hardcore because I saw some of it in John Moxley getting cut or this ladder match. Or the Texas Death Match, which really went to, which really went a lot of places. It's all those things, pretty much. I think sometimes I've honestly seen too many hardcore matches to not even get affected by them anymore, and really feel much by them at all. Just my thing. Surprise, Kings of the Black Throne did not come away with the tag team titles, but okay. And 
LFI also not with the belts, and neither. I mean, because look, there's a lot of teams right there that could have very well been tag team champions, all four of them, but they went with Ricky and Big Bill. Okay. And then you look at the three way match for the TBS title, and you see how far they've gone going very gothic and going into that inner realm kind of feel like they would do with Rosemary or whatever in a, in a Havoc over in TNA. But yeah, Julia Hart embracing completely the House of Black. Same thing going for Sky Blue. Now Sky Blue's completely changed. They, they showed that tonight, you know, they, they've been continuously evolving her character out of the Chicago girl with the ball cap and the whole thing, right? And the booty shorts, like she's gone completely full circle now into another, into a dark brooding character. She's here now and she's reacting really well and people are liking it. I guess people really do like the fact it's just, they, they feel kind of like indifferent to the fact that sky blue hasn't necessarily joined house of black or joined Julia Hart. They're just kind of at odds, but something about what Julia Hart did to her, they keep taking these innocent, sweet looking baby face, uh, women's wrestlers and turning them into something else. And that's what they've chosen to do. And somehow it's worked because there's more depth to these characters now. And there's something more where we're all kind of appreciating and Julia Hart and sky blue have improved themselves. I mean, not just to do work on dark, but I think with dark being gone, they had a lot of reps in the ring, but getting to work some better matches with the likes of Willow Nightingale or, you know, you know, just or Chris Statlander or, pick them right red velvet you can see that there's a lot there that some of these stars that were very green coming in at the beginning and seeing them on dark and dark elevation they've improved they've gotten better so something happened where julia hart sky blue quite improved chris statlander doing really well in here but takes the loss and so she drops the belt and i forget how long it was been that jay cargill dropped the belt to her but we're at that point Let's see how long the actual title ring was, because I didn't get a chance to really look at that yet. But so far, <clears throat> but Chris Statlander held on to it for 174 days. So it was double or nothing. There we go. And Jake Cargill at 508 days. But yeah, Chris Statlander, second title holder, and a significant title ring going through that. And now we go to Julia Hart. And they really make a thing where that TBS title is somewhat still special, still significant, and they haven't allowed that belt to be hot potatoed around, which I think is also very smart. Swerve Strickland, Heyman, Adam Page. I'm enjoying to see this. I really do continue to enjoy this feud. I think Texas Deathmatch, with all that have been going on right now, I think we can still stretch this out somewhere. But Swerve now takes the win on this match. So we're going to have to see a rubber match. What's that going to be? And the fact that a Texas death match was, you know, you had to go and survive the count, a 10 count. Prince Don not taking a pretty nasty hit with a chair, with a table. You know, like there was a whole lot of stuff with certain devices there in that match. Like just going to the match itself. Page history, fall away slams, moonsault, barbed wire chair to Strickland. Tombstone pile driver it's onto a chair by Strickland. And all these things that we're doing to try to get themselves in. Dead eye through a barbed wire board. And then you got Nana helping out, Brian Cage coming out, Buckle Bomb F5. Page using barbed wire around his arm, two rolling elbows and a lariat. C cinder block. Onto Page's back. Like they really do make Adam Page superhuman through what they were doing throughout the night. But then you have the chain that is around Adam Page's neck and hung him on the ropes, and he passes out, and that's it. But overwhelming odds, and that's why Sir Strickland comes in. So Sir Strickland getting the match back up. They are definitely doing a lot to kind of build up on this feud. They did the stuff where they did it in the house of Adam Page. It's pretty good to storytelling. The storyline, obviously, there's a lot of hostility there. They're playing it up really to a fever pitch, and it works. And then we get to Golden Jets. 
So it was the Young Bucks anyway in this, but nothing with Don Callis' family involved on full gear. That's unfortunate. I mean, we did get Don Callis on commentary, but nobody on full gear into this, which is one thing I didn't like too much. But anyway, Omega and Jericho get a chance at the World Tag Team titles. And then we go to MJF and Jay White. They tell that story. And, you know, and I'm not sure if I'm so into the MJF when he's out there with Adam Cole and this whole comeback story kind of thing and just this recovery and totally blown up and goes back out. But then they still have plunder for him and still he does heel shit. Like he'll still grab some trunks on the ropes that so got to get a pin or use a dynamite dynamite ring. Like there's still a bit of that middle ground heel ship that he will still do and they'll move along with it. And hopefully they'll get, they'll, they'll he'll be able to go and do what they're doing to do with him now so that he doesn't completely lose the heel persona. They're trying to keep something of his natural persona so that he doesn't go turn full baby face. And then like whatever he was, the devil doesn't come back. And by the way, no devil appearance tonight. And then the other thing they had tonight of the major announcement for it, an AEW star coming now into the space, a major announcement was, well, Osprey now full time with all the wrestling. But now what we do know is that even though that's happening, you know, you still have three more months for Will Ospreay to finish up his contract with New Japan for wrestling, but I guess he's not going to go back over there any particular phase, so he's going to come back and work full-time in the States. Good for him. Good on him and see where it goes. So all of that worked out. It was quite a fascinating night. I just think that, you know, well, the MGF, MGF story is still very prominent. They kind of felt like they had to go ahead and do a little bit of stop gaps, a little bit of stretching out just to get to this point. Cause we know eventually we want to get to Sting at his retirement match. We want to get to Adam Copeland and Christian cage one-on-one of the ring. We want to get to, you know, the culmination of Swerve Strickland, Adam page, get to that rubber match. Like all those things we want to go and see more of. And there's stories they really didn't finish off yet. Like there was, I don't know if there's any conclusions of any feuds at this point. I just feel like there's more to it. I mean, maybe Cassidy and Moxley being done, maybe that's it. But I think some matches did not finish a storyline. We didn't get the, a, a payoff. And that's what was going on right now. I think we're going to have to hold on for that and see what happens at Revolution. So that's what we're looking at. Now, the other thing I can tell you that I didn't get a chance to watch is I didn't get a chance to go and see MLW and Fightland. I know that was going on at the same time, so not a chance to go and catch that either. But what I'll tell you that I know about what happened tonight is ladder match for the tag team titles, second gear crew, defeat of the calling, and now we have new tag team champions. Mance Warner is leaving, leaving MLW. As a result of Matt Cardona winning the No DQ Loser Leaves MLW match, Mascara Dorada and Ichiban and defeated Rocky Romero and Barbario Quirinario with Salida de la Renta. So, Empresarius, you know, Promociones Dorado and the Empresaria do not win tonight. And Alex Kane beat Jacob Fatu to retain the World Heavyweight title. That's what they had in the four matches tonight, with more to come. We're going to keep it like that right now all together for the program and for tonight. So there's more fallout that will come out as a result of what happened tonight in Englewood. It'll be just nice to give Emma, it's be AEW a little bit of a break on pay-per-views, kind of give them some time to go and build storylines to where we can culminate a revolution with some of these major storylines getting a bit to a payoff. I'd like to see that come up pretty soon. And that's going to do for the show tonight. Thanks for listening in. Of course, find a YouTube channel at King of Podcasts, the website, kingofpodcasts.com. Come back this Wednesday for another Wrestling Resort podcast because wrestling needs us.